it's Susan here and welcome to In The Craft Room. Today I was hoping to begin the Peter Rabbit Patchwork Quilt Partworks issue number 11. After issue number 10, they do come out weekly, but there has been some delays in the distribution due to our current lockdown situation here in Victoria. So instead, we're going to be making a Susan's Make and Create. We're going to be making a no sew quilted poly ball with a Peter Rabbit twist. These poly balls are traditionally used around Christmas and other seasonal times. There's Easter ones, Halloween ones and of course Christmas ones. But I'm going to make a Peter Rabbit no so quilted poly ball as a decorator piece. This is what mine will look like when it's finished. Like with all the Peter Rabbit patchwork squares and character squares, I've never made all these before and it's a learning journey for me as well. Well, I've never made a quilted poly ball before. I've done a lot of reading about it and I think I'm ready to go. To make the quilted no sew poly ball, we've got squares of fabric in one design. We've got our second lot of squares of fabric. I've used five and a half centimeters by five and a half centimeter squares. They recommend that you use from my reading about 12 of one color and about 24 of the other. But I don't know how many I'll need. I've got a 10 centimeter poly ball and I'm not sure how much fabric I will use. So I've made a pile of 30 and 20. As well as our fabric, I've got dressmakers pins. We're going to pin the fabric onto the poly ball. I also have a little jar that I'm going to use as a bit of a stand. So it's not rolling all over the place. I also have lengths of ribbon. You can use a sequined trim or other types of trim. This will be my trim to pin along the edging to conceal the edges of the fabric when we're finished. I've also got my ribbon ready for hanging. And now for the Peter Rabbit twist. In the center as a feature on our poly ball, I've cut out two of the images of Peter Rabbit from our licensed fabric of Peter Rabbit and Friends. As you can see here, there are two images that have been um, highlighted on this fabric. There's Peter in action and there's a standing stationary Peter. I've cut out each of these and they're going to be featuring on our poly ball. So let's begin. I've just switched on the iron to heat it up. We're going to be using the iron a lot in this process. We're going to be ironing our squares into half. We're then going to be ironing it with the two top edges folded down in the bottom to create like a cat's ear. It's a bit like a cat's ear. And the reason why we're pressing it is because when we open up our square, we'll be able to see the center where we're going to be putting our concealed pin. But let's get ironing. We've got a bit to do. I'm just folding the squares in half first and giving them a good press.
that's our lighter fabric pressed into halves now for our darker fabric Although I've used fabric, um, you can use ribbon as well. Some wide ribbons, like a five centimetre wide ribbon, can be cut into squares as well, saving you lots of time. You can even use some of the satins and velvets to make a very opulent poly ball as well. And in my research, I've also seen paper being used. So here are our two piles of fabric. They've been pressed into half. I'm now going to show you on my closer camera what we're going to do. I'm going to move my piles aside and the top edge that's folded this is the opening at the bottom here. So the opening's at the bottom, the folded edge is at the top. I'm now going to take the two top edges and fold them down into the center. And I'm going to give that a press. So it does resemble a bit of a cat's ear. And this is what it looks like. So we've got our pile of cat's ears. I'm now going to pop the iron away and get on to the next step. So I've got my poly ball sitting onto my jar for stability. I've popped a um, pin in the top and a pin in the bottom to get my center bearings correct. I'm going to start with this feature and I'm going to be pinning it onto the poly ball in the middle. So I'm going to start pinning one corner in. And I'm going to go diagonally to the other corner and pop a pin in. We're working with a round surface, so we need to stretch the fabric over the ball. And the same here. And here we have Peter Rabbit on our poly ball. That's all we're going to be doing today and that's the end of part one. Thank you for joining us in the craft room today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join me next time when I finish off our Peter Rabbit No Sew Quilted Polly Ball. See you next time. Bye!